Welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I have some new spring DIYs for you. I'm gonna take a mini little watering can and I'm going to rust it using just vinegar. It's really cool. I also have this darling little bird that I found at the thrift store that I give a makeover to to match my home decor. He turns out really cute. And this DIY quite possibly is one of the biggest failed DIYs I probably ever had on my channel. I'm anxious to know what you guys think because I do try and save it in the end, but you'll just have to see. I make this really cute topiary today using napkin rings that I found at the craft store. It's kind of a fun little project and there's so many different ways that you can use this when it's done. So stay with me and let's craft together as we make some beautiful spring DIYs. If you like crafting DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you do like any of the projects today, remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's go make some DIYs. I picked this darling little yellow bird up at a thrift store and honestly, I don't remember paying $8 for it. It must have been a half off day because I really don't think I would have paid $8. Maybe I did. Anyhow, we're going to make him match my decor because I don't have anything this bright yellow. This is a really bright yellow, even brighter than what it's showing on camera here. And it's so nice to be able to pick up pieces that you love the shape of and be able to change them to match your decor. Of course, it's always convenient if you find the piece that's already your color and I know somebody's going to comment and say, oh why did you paint that yellow bird he was adorable he is but it's gonna look really weird in my house with just one yellow bird so I'm just painting him to match the decor and I do that with just some white chalk paint and I'm just using the folk art chalk paint here and I give a very light coat on the first coat a very light layer and then just kind of build on that it takes about three coats to completely get the coverage on this little guy that I need this little guy had a beautiful finish on him where there was pieces like on the wing and on the beak and on his little tail that had looked really distressed, like almost like the yellow glaze had not gone on those areas. So I was trying originally to sand those areas to have them peek through. The problem is it was very sporadic and I was starting to get that yellow paint to pop through. So it takes me just a minute to figure this out and I keep sanding because I'm like, I just don't know what really to do and I was gonna wait and see what it looked like in the end. So stick with me because there's a little process here that I go through to get this to how I like him in the end. But I take some burnt umber, just the cheap little apple barrel uh, acrylic paint that I pick up at Walmart uh, or anywhere that sells like acrylic paint, you can find this color. And I just am kind of lightly going over those raised areas. So where all that detail is on his tail and his wing, I'm just going over that with kind of a dry brush, a little heavier. You can see I'll swirl it in the paint and then kind of swirl it off the brush so it's not super heavy and then I just kind of go over all those and I'm going to go back over them with some white paint so I'm not super worried about it being like the way that it looks right now because if you look at it you're going that's hideous <laughs> there's a lot of paint there so just kind of watch and see how I do this and it's kind of a process of going back and forth but they have such lovely detail on here that I really just wanted to have that enhance that and have that show otherwise it's just going to look like a unfinished like ceramic bird and I did not want that so I'm going over lightly just dry brushing with the white to go over those little raised areas and you can see it's just going over that brown and it, it covers it but it still pops through because it's such a light coat but it just tones it down and makes it have that really rustic look. And I liked the way that it was looking, so I got my brown paintbrush here and I even go over his little face because the details and the eyes were there and I just wanted it all to kind of pop. And you can see I just go right back over that with some white to tone it down. And that way it just makes all of those little raised areas and that detail, like that's what's so fun about these pieces is to have that pop. Now if you've watched me for any length of time, you, you know that I love to have a piece that like looks like you found it in the barn or it's been sitting out for years or it's been like you found it in great grandma's attic or something that is just so aged. That's my style and I love it. But you can kind of see that I just decided to go over the entire bird with this the little bit of brown burnt umber in my brush and go all over it. And what's happening is all of the brush strokes, since it's chalk paint, you get lots of those brush strokes in the detail and it's picking up that paint and giving it a lovely texture. Like I thought it looked so pretty. It almost looks like concrete when I'm done with this but I can kind of go over it now. I, I still will go over with my white brush, but you can see I'm just getting the lightest amount of that brown 
and you can see especially right there that how those brush strokes that texture it enhances those and just gives it a nice aged finished look and so here I'll take my brush and just go all over this again with a white just to tone it down so it's not overly dark I just like the way that the layered pieces look on this or the not layered pieces but the layered paint looks on this and at this point I'm like okay I really like this I was really kind of unsure at first but I just think he turns out to be such a cute little guy and he's just perfect and it's a neutral color that I can stick out year round and have in my decor I love to have birds out year round I really do love how he turns out. He's got that really natural tone that I can put really anywhere in my home and he's gonna fit in and look beautiful. What do you guys think of him? Today's episode is part of a spring collaboration playlist. I will have that link in my description box as well as pinned in my comments. When you click on that link, it will take you right to the playlist where it's going to play all of these lovely, talented creators videos. You'll get all of the inspiration and ideas you need for your spring DIYing. This is hosted by Liana DIY. I am also joined with DIY Next Door and our guest hosts this month are Violet's DIY Style and Happiness Created. So go check out all of their channels. Tell them that Emily sent you. Subscribe if you're not already and get some fun different ideas for DIYing for springtime. Let's get right back into our DIYs. I've had this little watering can in my tiered tray decor for some time and I usually will put like a different ribbon on it or some different plants but I wanted to kind of do something new to it so I'm going to age it and have it rust and I'm using just regular white vinegar and so what I'm going to do is I'm just taking a bag here and I'm going to place it inside of this is just a crate from Dollar Tree and I don't leave it in this crate I'm just doing this so I have somewhere right now to pour that vinegar into so that way it's not going to like go all over it just gives some stability to the bag so I pour or maybe like a quarter inch in there to begin with and I just set that watering can in there now if you don't have a piece small enough to put into a bag I've also done this in like a big um, like Tupperware bowl before where I poured some in and like I probably could have poured enough vinegar to cover this entire watering can but I mean I didn't need to so you don't have to do that and when you're working with really big projects you're not going to want to do that it would take so much vinegar so you want to definitely use some paper towels like I am here saturate those and then wrap them around your project there with the with the vinegar and so I'm just making sure that they're completely covered and yes it does kind of smell a little bit and if you do it like not in a bag that you can close like maybe take it out to your garage like mine sat in my basement and I couldn't really smell it even when I went down maybe just for a minute you could smell it but I mean it goes away it dissipates really quickly once you pour that vinegar out so I'm just wrapping this really carefully around all of those edges and everything I even take a little more vinegar and I just pour that in I pour it kind of more inside the watering can I don't know why I felt like I needed to rust the inside of the watering can since you're not going to see it but you know who knows why we do some of the things we just do it because it feels good I guess or we just think like oh I'll do this anyway just to give you a frame of reference I did this at night it was probably about 10 o'clock at night when I did all of this and then it was probably about noon the next day when I came back and so I'm just going, that just gives you, so that way you can kind of tell. If you can do it maybe 24 hours, you might get a lot of rust. I mean, I get a little bit, but you'll see here in just a second. So, and, and if you want to, well, it's in this bag, you can kind of shake it around every now and then if you want to kind of move everything around. But here we're just going to pour this, or not pour it out, but pull this little watering can out. And it really, once the vinegar starts to dry, you'll be able to see like the rust on there. Here's an up close look of it. So you can kind of see it started to on the little spout there and on the handle little bit on the front definitely gave it more of a aged patina than having like that bright uh, metal on there so I was really happy with how it ended up looking and so the longer the more rust you're gonna get and I just had this little plant this came from uh, just like one of the little sections at Hobby Lobby where you get the little picks but I'm really gonna change this up for different seasons I just thought it would be fun to have a nice little aged look to it kind of change it from how it's been for the last couple of years and I really think it turned out cute have you guys ever tried aging anything with vinegar before I'd love to know how it worked for you this was a really fun project and I love how it turns out this is just a votive holder from Dollar Tree and then these are some napkin rings that you can get at Hobby Lobby these were from last year springtime 2023 but honestly they have them almost year-round I think in their napkin section there and just I'm taking some old styrofoam and then a stick from my yard 
and I'm going to make a cute little topiary here. This is going to be so cute for like a tiered tray. Uh, even if you did like a fairy garden or something indoors. I mean, there's so many different ways that you could use this, but I'm just removing the tags from those napkin rings because we don't need those. And then I went ahead and cut this uh, stick down to be a little bit smaller. If you don't have some sticks in your yard or anything like that, use the end of one of those sponge tool brushes when you're done with it. Stain it up and it works perfectly so you don't have to go hunting for some sticks or if it's a time of year or maybe you don't have a yard that you have anything like that in. There's definitely ways around that, even just a dowel or like a plunger handle, something like that. So I went ahead and you saw that I pressed that votive holder down on that styrofoam to kind of make a template there. And I just used my putty knife there to cut this off and then I just get it to size. Now I move this out. I probably should have stuck the glue in there first before I did all this, but it worked out. So you do want that styrofoam glued down there. That is key because you don't want this falling out of this little, this is your like planter pot that the topiary is growing out of. So I just kind of punched a little hole with my stick here and just centered it the best I could. If you like to measure, definitely do that. I just kind of eyeballed it. It's styrofoam. You can kind of bend it in which way you need. But after I kind of poked that down in, I'm just using some hot glue, pretty liberal amount. And then I'm just going to place this down in. Now this project does take a lot of like, okay, now I'm going to sit and hold this until it dries. And so I put some around the outside of the stick here. This is going to give it a little bit more support and then just make sure that that dries thoroughly before you start working with the stick. Now I take another piece of this styrofoam and I just put it in the center of this napkin ring. There's a nice little like literal ring in the center of this that you can kind of push that styrofoam into. And then I just went with my hot glue gun and glued around the edges so that styrofoam was secure in there. So that's what's going to give you because the napkin ring is a lot wider than my stick that I'm putting this on. So you just need something there to kind of give you a little more stability when you put this on. And this is one of the parts that you just want to make sure that that dries completely before you move on to the next step, which right here, I'm just going to push that styrofoam over that stick just very gently. And what's going to happen when you push this down is it's going to push up. Like you'll see here that I'll have that little piece of styrofoam there that I took off from where the hole was, um, where the hole was made there. And then I just gently slide this down and then I'm just going to, there's the little piece of styrofoam right there. <laughs> and then uh, I take my hot glue and do use a, li a liberal amount of hot glue. And I'm going to, I glue around the bottom of this. And then I think I go back in and glue around the top. I just don't want this going anywhere. And you just want to scoot this down your stick to not quite the very bottom. Cause you want to be able to see a little of the trunk of that topiary. And then you just, I just sat and held it like this for uh, maybe like three minutes or something just to let it, that glue dry. And that way you've got a firm hold and that little part of your topiary is not going to go anywhere. Now for the top, it kind of took me a little bit of imagination to think of how I wanted to do this. This is just one of those moss covered styrofoam stones that you get uh, at the craft store. I've got a bag of these at Dollar Tree uh, and I just kind of punched, you can see I'm just using my pencil to pop, like dig out a little bit of a crevice there so I can put that onto my stick. And I thought that would be the best on here because I really just needed it to sit on the top so I could place that other napkin ring. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue there and I will just, I think I burnt myself right there. That's why I went away so fast. So be careful when using styrofoam and glue because the hot glue melts the styrofoam. So I'm just uh, holding that there until it dries. And then I'll come back in with some hot glue and I just put like a little ring around the top here. And that's just to glue our top layer of the topiary on. So I'm just going to get that and you can see I'm just separating all of those leaves. So it's very open and it fits right over the top of that. It worked out beautifully to do that. I honestly think you could probably try and do that for both layers. Just cut a hole in the middle of it might work even better than the floral foam that I used. But I, ha I didn't think of that until I was doing the top and was like, how am I going to do this? And it worked out perfect. Now, this is just a little piece that I took off so I could have one to glue on the top to kind of cover the fact that it, it has like a hole in the middle. So that way it kind of closes the gap there. And then in order to finish this off, and I apologize that the camera angle, you can't see exactly what I'm doing, but I'm putting glue all the way around that styrofoam that's in the votive. And I have some moss, just some floral moss or some reindeer moss. I think I had just a random bag from 
Hobby Lobby from when I did my fairy gardens last summer. I just took a little bit of that and that's what's going to give you that finished look. You just press that down and that's what's going to finish this off. I mean, you could even do like a little bit of dirt or stones or anything you want in there to give it a finished look, but you just don't want that styrofoam in there. When I finish a project I've used hot glue on, I always like to blast it with my heat tool to melt all of the little webby strings from your hot glue. Keep in mind that these leaves are plastic though, so you can melt those if you leave it there too long. So you're just doing kind of a quick blast to kind of hit each of those little strings from the hot glue. But look at how cute this is. I think this turned out so fun and it's darling. Whether you do doll houses, whether you have tiered trays, this is going to look beautiful on a tiered tray or have a cute little shelf you want to stick this on. Maybe you want to glue a couple little like Easter eggs in it and have it be for Easter. I mean, there's so many possibilities. It was just fun to be able to take a stick and some napkin rings and a votive and make this cute little topiary. What do you guys think of this one? I've been holding on to these ceramic uh, orbs, balls, whatever that I picked up at Dollar Tree a while back. And it kind of has this beautiful flower uh, shape to it. It's just kind of a plain ceramic, so it needs some type of treatment to it, I feel like. And so I'm just using my heat tool and I'm just gonna peel off this sticker here on the bottom there. That heat tool works great to get those off, but it's really pretty and I really thought it would be fun to kind of do um, like a wax detail on it to kind of make all of those little grooves and everything pop and have that detail come out. So I thought that I would paint it this lovely green color. Now, of course, any color that you paint this is going to be beautiful. And when I started this, because I really was kind of going for just a nice, fresh vibe with this and I thought that this green was really dark, but it does end up okay. So stick with me on this one because even though it does look kind of dark and, and it ends up being kind of bright and really pretty. So, but any color that you would do this would be beautiful. It does take a couple of coats. As you can see here, as I'm drying it, there's a little bit of the white peeking through maybe that you're, cause it's so porous because it's just kind of like an unfinished ceramic. It just kind of pulls that paint in rather than letting it spread. So it does take a couple of coats on this. So I'm just showing I had to go over it a couple of times just to get the coverage to make sure that you didn't have, it didn't look unfinished in any way and you didn't have any of the, the white peeking through. Now this is just a white wax. Uh, this is uh, folk arts kind. I pick it up at Hobby Lobby and I'm taking a stencil brush so I can pounce and swirl this in so it gets in all of the grooves. And this is what's going to brighten up this green really well. So I just, as you can see, go around and just swirl it. You can be kind of heavy handed with this if you want uh, you, because it smears and spreads very lovely, very easily all around. So a little does go a long way, but you can be generous. You don't need to be like worried about being too heavy handed because we're gonna wipe most of it off. So here I just grabbed a dry paper towel. You could probably use a baby wipe, might even wipe, uh, wipe more of it off. Or if you got your paper towel wet, I just had a dry one and I started wiping it. And I started wiping it from like the top of it down to the bottom and realized if you wipe it in the way of the design here, like I am right there, it wipes off like a lot easier and it's a lot smoother to do. And you just go around and just wipe it off until you get the finish that you want. And you can see all of that beautiful detailing there starts to pop, almost looks like, like mermaid scales or something when it's positioned like this, doesn't it? But it's really nice and you just keep doing this until you get all of the amount that you want off. Now you can see how clean and crisp this is looking. It's starting to show those little details and that embellishment so beautifully. And if you get to this point and you think like I've wiped too, um, it too much, you can put a little bit more wax on. Or if the opposite, like here, I decided I wanted the green to pop a little bit more on those raised areas. So I just took the rest of the green that was left in my brush and I'm just going over some of the areas. And that's just going to enhance that original green color we put on there. It's just gonna enhance that and make that white pop even more. So that's a great detail if you did get a little too heavy handed there's ways to fix it and this is one of them so it's, it's a great tip to use I can't believe that for a dollar 25 and some paint and a little bit of wax I get this beautiful orb to use in my decor you would pay upwards of 10 plus dollars for these if you were to buy them at a store already completed 
I really love how you can see all of that detail from the wax up close here. I think it turned out really beautiful and that detail is really so fun to see up close like this. This is one of those pieces that is so fun to have and is really a staple because you can use it in tiered trays, anywhere that you need a pop of color. And that's what's so fun is you can paint them different colors and have them for different seasons if you would like. So when you find these at Dollar Tree, grab a couple. I almost didn't put this DIY in, and you'll see why in just a moment, but I thought I would show you uh, how you can take something that maybe you really don't like or you mess up and how you can kind of embrace it and make it look okay. So this is just a little cutting board. They sell them at Hobby Lobby year round. I picked this from like 2023's spring line. I buy them when they're like half off or even 70% off. So you're only paying a couple of dollars for them. And they're so fun to use in tiered tray decor and different, uh, things like um, just to have like in a shelf in a kitchen or something but I have these rub-on transfers these came from essential stencils and they're beautiful transfers and I'm so you guys I kind of really botched this uh, transfer here and I'm so sad about it because it is such a beautiful transfer and you'll see exactly what I mean here so right now I'm just picking the side of the cutting board that I want and there's this little like almost chip in there like this little crack and I loved the way that looked so I made that in the front and on these just work like any rub-on transfers that you've seen before they're a little bit sticky on the back there so you don't want to like touch your finger on there and peel it up but you want to center it on your design where you're putting it or your surface where you're putting it and you can see I'm just going to center this and then you just kind of rub it all the way down to kind of make it stick so that way you can start to transfer it and watch what happens here like the first like the first swipe that I do of doing this it bent the paper back and I peeled or like ripped my transfer so I literally sat there and maybe cried a couple minutes over it not really but maybe I did <laughs> but I decided I'm gonna keep going and just see what it looks like maybe I can make it look like really distressed or something which is what I end up doing because sometimes when this happens I mean there was no coming back from that I just had to embrace it or throw it away and so I thought well let's just see what happens and it does end up looking pretty cute uh, is it perfect no do I wish this hadn't happened yes but it's okay. I mean, it's fine and it looks okay. So I'm just rubbing the back of the transfer on it, the paper to kind of help it uh, bur burnish that onto the wood. And then I take my fingernail file and I'm really gonna rough this up because I'm trying to make this look now like it's something that's been sitting around in grandma's kitchen for years or something. And that design has just faded or chipped over time. And so you can see that I get pretty heavy handed with the way that I'm sanding because that's a pretty big, botch up at the top there that I did I still look at it and it makes me really mad and, and sad but I mean it ends up cute you'll have to let me know if you guys have ever done this with the rub on transfers and uh what you did about it or if you just kind of embraced it but I just kept sanding it and I was like well it looks it looks pretty good I mean these actually age pretty well like you can age them and make them look distressed really good like it's just an old label that had been sitting on this little cutting board for decades so so it's kind of fun that you know you can take something that you've ruined like this and still make it look look all right and intentional right because we all know that was definitely not intentional <laughs> So again, after I sanded, it kind of had a little bit of a sticky feeling to it because that adhesive on the back. So I just rubbed it down with that uh, transfer paper that it came on it again. And then I sprayed it with a little bit of water to kind of get all of the little dust particles and stuff up there and just gently wipe that off. I was very careful going over this design because that's all I needed was the water to start to peel that up. Now you can go over this with some decoupage. Um, you can do some like food safe decoupage. You can do hard coat, satin, whatever kind that you want to on there I um, I just left it because I'm not going to be using it for any type of like a coaster or anything like that it's probably just gonna go on a tiered tray that I'm gonna put together or just like in my shelf on my kitchen just a fun cute little thing these are also really fun gifts to tie on to like like if you're giving it Christmas time or Mother's Day or something or a birthday present or just a gift for a friend these are kind of fun to tie on to something a little extra you know how sometimes people will tie like little teeny whisks on things or some cookie cutters like these little cutting boards are perfect to have for those just to add just a little something especially if you personalize it maybe you wouldn't give this one out with what I did <laughs> but but you get the gist you get the idea 
Now I tied some jute twine on here, some thick on there to kind of make it look like it's what it would hang from. And if you spray this with some water and stretch it out and let that dry, it's gonna take all of that like curl or kink that's in there out of that jute twine. And look, I mean, this looks really beautiful. Again, is it perfect? No. Do I wish this hadn't have happened? Absolutely. But I think I took something that was maybe destined for the trash after that moment and made it look intentional and look pretty. And I'm sure that in somebody's rustic kitchen, I mean, my kitchen has some pretty rustic things in it. It's going to look beautiful. I would love to know what you guys think of this. Would you have just scrapped it or would you have kept going on? It's so fun to be back crafting with some beautiful spring DIYs. I've had so much fun. I'm really channeling that inner spring. I would love to know what temperature you're currently sitting at. I think today I'm sitting at about 30 degrees, which is actually kind of warm for how it's been for the last few days, but man, I really wish spring would get here. So let me know down in the comments what temperature you're sitting at today. I would love to know. Maybe some of you guys, if you have some warm weather, can send some of it my way. I would really appreciate that. I guess for now, I'll just have to settle for some spring DIYs to keep channeling that. You guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Remember to click that link down in my description box as well as pinned in my comments to see the playlist and all the other beautiful DIYs that the other creators have made for you. You're going to get so much fun inspiration and before you know it, spring's going to be here. So let's pass the time by watching some fun spring DIYs, right? <laughs> Thanks so much for watching today, you guys. I'll see you next time. Happy crafting! If you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.